Hello guys and welcome back to another video in our channel and uh, welcome to our video today. So today we are going to actually look into a very very important topic that I want us to discuss and I want us to actually handle a topic that is going that we are going to actually do a series on and uh, I have actually filmed myself to actually be doing tactical series. These are some things that I have done to actually try and explain to fans the in-depth, detailed uh, analysis of various tactical solutions and problems that the team actually faces. So I've actually prepared uh, a five uh, video series on this and uh, the main topic of discussion that we'll be talking about in this analysis is going to be about why teams should be scared of Chelsea when they employ positional play next season. Why is positional play going to make Chelsea so dangerous next season? That is something that I want us to talk about and we are actually going to delve into every aspect of positional play. We are going to look at how positional play sets itself up. We are going to look at it from the build-up phase to the progressive play and to the attacking phase. We are also going to look at it when positional play is employed in possession and how positional play is also pragmatic when it comes to the off-the-ball uh, situations, the, uh, the things that involve the counter-press, the pressing and the overall defensive structure of the team. That is what we are going to look at. And we are going to base this on Enzo Maresca's philosophy of positional play. So I'd really invite you to like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification so that you're able to get more videos related to this. And we immediately delve into the tactical analysis for this video. And our first analysis and the first uh, point of view that we're actually going to look at is the first thing that you're going to try and analyze is the build-up phase. And the build-up phase is a very interesting phase. And I know it's a phase that has really, really uh, created a lot of uh, questions for fans. And uh, fans have really been asking themselves, is Chelsea going to actually have a great build-up face next season that is the thing that we are actually going to try and analyze now Lamed. let's uh check hello go on, go on. Go on. Back, uh, Sibir, can you hear him so sorry about that sorry about that okay 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 let's uh, let me share my screen again let me share my screen again. Okay, here it is. I'm actually share, sharing my screen again. Now, we are going to try and look at positional play analysis, build up play. Build up play involves how the team is actually progressing from the defensive phase to the attacking phase of football. So, Build-up play is very crucial and very important for Enzo Maresca. It details how his, he wants his teams to play. Build-up play is so crucial because it actually signifies to Enzo Maresca how he's able to beat the first line of pressure during build-up. And I'm actually going to share a tactical board screen to explain to you how this happens. So let's just check use uh, a board that explains more about what happens in that build-up situation now here is the board let me share this now when you look at this board here when you look at this board here we are going to now place the the the, the build-up structure according to how Mareska wants it so this is the goalkeeper then we have the fullback in these kinds of positions then we have the center backs in these kinds of positions and then we have the the other center back in this kind of position remember the builder phase involves the team how the team plays in their own half that is what the builder phase involves 
So you have uh, the two center backs, the two, uh, the two full backs. You have the holding midfielder here. You have the wingers who are actually hugging the touchline. You have the number eight here, the number nine also hugging, uh, playing further forward so that he can actually pin the center backs. And we're actually trying to create the 4-3-3 system of play that Mareska will employ during build-up. Now, build-up is very important. And the first thing that I want to talk about in build-up, I want to talk about the goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper is very important. And uh, this is the reason why you're seeing players such as uh, George Petrovic not being allowed the uh, time and uh, the time to play at Chelsea. Now, one thing that you need to understand is that the goalkeeper should be very good at playing the ball and these kinds of instances, and he should be able to know how to pick his center backs. He should also be very good at uh, making uh, passes which are either direct to the holding midfielder in this kind of manner, so that, that when he plays the pass to the holding midfielder, and maybe the opponent is moving to cover the holding midfielder, he can actually play this pass, can, uh, can play the ball in that uh, third man pass combination. So the ball moves from the goalkeeper to the holding midfielder and the holding midfielder plays the ball onto the center back. And this situation actually starts with the goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper should understand this, especially when he has both of his center backs being covered. So for example, if both of your center backs are being covered and you are the only player with the ball at your feet in these kinds of instances, what you should actually do is the center backs will actually move uh, slightly in this position, the goalkeeper should actually decide to carry the ball forward in this kind of phase. Now, when the goalkeeper carries the ball forward in this kind of phase, what happens is that this uh, attacker will have to decide to actually stop covering the centre back, this one or this one, and actually move towards trying to cover the goalkeeper. And when they cover the goalkeeper, in this kind of instance, you'll realize that uh, you'll automatically realize one thing that they automatically outnumber the. Yeah, they automatically outnumber the number of players who are pressing them. This, that's the main advantage of having a goalkeeper during build-up. And once the goalkeeper is receiving the ball in this instance, when the, the attacker decides to actually press from out to in to try and cover the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper should be able to make this pass. This pass should be made. This direct pass should be made onto the holding midfielder. And once the ball is played into the holding midfielder, the holding midfielder should not be afraid to play this ball to the center back who will now be free and now the center back in this position can either choose to play the ball forward towards this position or play the ball towards the right back now let's look at an in, uh, an, an example of enzo maresca actually deploying a goalkeeper in this kind of fashion now from uh from this clip here uh from this uh the uh, this clip here i want to show you how Enzo Maresca actually does that. Now you can see from this clip here, I want to share this clip here. You can see from this clip here, Chelsea are actually looking to try and build that play. And I want you to generally look at the position of Robert Sanchez. Don't even look at the position of the other players. Look at the position of Robert, uh, uh, the position of the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper has actually stepped out and is actually occupying a position that is actually similar to that of a center back. Now, the goalkeeper occupying this position actually gives Chelsea numerical advantages in the team. Now, I want to show you how Chelsea are able to gain numerical advantage with the goalkeeper actually occupying this position. Now, because I've explained to you the, uh, using this uh, uh, using this uh, screen here, I want to further explain to you how this actually works. Now, when you look at uh, when you look at this screen here, you're able to see the position of the goalkeeper and the position of the two players who are looking to press. Now, because the two players are looking to press, sometimes other teams are think uh, other teams are like to overcommit players because they want to press the opponent extremely high. Let me show you. Now, when you have an opponent who has decided that because the centre-backs have decided to drop alongside the goalkeeper and actually start out wide, the opposition might decide to commit three players to press the goalkeeper. So you have the opposition actually committing three players, all three of them to press 
the back line as they are actually attempting to try and press the ball. Now, when the three of them uh, are moving towards trying to press the goalkeeper, what you'll notice is that they will either they will even further commit their midfielders in these kinds of phase to actually even look to try and pick their other three midfielders. So one midfielder will pick the number six and the other two will look to sit deep. So in these kinds of instances, these midfielders are trying to create a situation whereby they are able to occupy one centre-back. Uh, and this is something that Liverpool used to do effectively under Jürgen Klopp. That is using a, a winger to occupy the centre back at the same time they are looking to cover the full back. So you are, are actually looking to create this kind of paradigm uh, uh, like this. So you have, they are looking to actually uh, try to limit how the team is able to play. So in these kinds of instances, you need to understand that positional play numerical advantages, horizontal numerical advantages have already been met. Because under positional play, you don't, you, are not supposed to have more than three players on the same line. Here, you already have three players on the same line. You're not supposed to have more than three players on the same line. So how can Chelsea actually beat this kind of build-up structure? And remember, building this build-up structure involves that your centre-backs, your goalkeepers, your holding midfielders, and your full-backs should be comfortable in receiving the ball under pressure. And this is why a player like Ben Chilwell will actually suffer in this kind of Maresca philosophy. He will suffer in that because he's not quite good with the ball. Now, when the teams decide to go three man to uh, man to man press in this kind of instance, you need to create a situation whereby you're able to create an overload. And this is where we see another trick that Mareska has actually employed this season, and that is actually pushing the the goalkeeper not to play as a goalkeeper or a third centre back in the in the build up phase, but rather having the goalkeeper actually play as a second center back now rather than having three players you now move in a situation whereby you have the goalkeeper acting as a center back in this kind of uh, situation similar to what i have shown you here similar to what i have shown you here where you, you're able to see the position of the goalkeeper now the goalkeeper in this position is not playing similar to what you expect the goalkeeper to play he's actually playing as an extra center back during build up and this is something you're going to see with chelsea time and time again and even if we try to uh, play this clip again you're able to see look at the position of robert sanchez robert sanchez is not actually playing as a center but he's actually not playing as a goalkeeper he's actually stepped out with the ball and once he has stepped out with the ball he's not looking to immediately pass the ball but he's looking to actually draw an opponent remember i want you to get this and i'm going to explain to you why he needs he's waiting so long with the ball let let me explain to you this now when you look at this uh, tactical board here, you'll realize that because the goalkeeper is actually acting as a center back, you have now other options. In that, now you can either decide to have one full back starting slightly deeper in this kind of phase, and you can have one full back looking to invert quickly. So rather than having this 3v3 three, three three, uh, man marking system in the middle of the park, you're going to have now four because the holding midfielder is going to move here the fullback is going to move here and the two number eights are going to move here. So when these two number eights decide to progress further high up, meaning that they're actually looking to push up in this kind of phase, what happens is that they actually pull these two midfielders with them. Now, this midfielder in this position who had actually looked to man mark, who had actually looked to man mark the holding midfielder now has to mark two players. And because he has now to mark two players, the team has already uh, obtained numerical advantages in midfield because now, rather than having uh, 3v3s in midfield, you have 4v3, meaning you have an extra player in midfield. And the other centre-back who was playing slightly deeper in this kind of situation will not most likely play in this position, but rather will move into a slightly wider full-back position. So now you have a back four. So you have now four players up against three. So these three players, this one striker is now not covering one player, but is right now having to cover two. The wingers will cover two players, but now they are actually covering two center backs. But what we're expecting now is that you already have numerical advantages in the first line of builder, in the first line of builder. And this is something that Enzo Maresca wants to do. <coughs> now let's look at uh, this structure here. Let's look at this structure here. 
Look at the position of Robert Sanchez. He receives the ball and he plays the ball to toss him. Look, he's not actually going back to the goalkeeping position, but rather he's actually creating a, a space whereby he's actually making himself an extra player during build-up. And because Robert Sanchez is occupying that position, look at the position of Ben Obadiashile. He's actually now playing as a left back, while the other, while Rhys James is actually playing as a right back. But you can notice now that Gusto is in midfield. Now the opponent here is actually tied because now the opponent who had actually picked uh, Romeo Lavia is now picking Lavia, but Gusto is in midfield. Now, the winger is caught into two situations. Should he pick Benoit Badiashile, who's play, in playing as the fullback position, or should he pick Malo Gusto, who was inverted in midfield? And this is actually giving opponents difficult problems. Now, tossing in this position, because one midfielder has decided to push up and one midfielder is actually ball watching, Tosin can make this direct ball to Christopher Nkunku in this position and actually break the opposition's front and midfield lights. Let's see. So Tosin spots this position. Gusto, who had actually played as an inverted fullback, is looking to receive the ball in this position. Now, when Gusto is receiving the ball in this position, what you're going to realize is that he has actually drawn one midfielder who was deep to actually move to try and cover him. He plays the ball back to Robert Sanchez. Now, the goalkeeper actually makes himself an extra player during build-up. And I want to explain to you this again using the tactical board. Now, looking at the tactical board, when the goalkeeper and the fullback has already taken this position, if one midfielder actually moves in this position, and as you have seen, Tosin actually played playing this ball to, to Gusto, and Gusto actually putting the position here, pulling a midfielder here, he's able to play the ball back to Sanchez, who's, be, who's not being marked. Now, Sanchez in this position can actually draw this player to mark him and Chelsea can make this and, uh, and Chelsea automatically can look to, <clears throat> to make this uh, pass here and actually attempt to make a, a, a lofted pass here. And once this pass is made over here like this, then Benoit Badiashile is actually receiving the ball with time and space. And now Badiashile can look to progress with the ball higher up the pitch. And this is the importance of having a goalkeeper to play in that position. Remember, another key, in, uh, another key reason why you need to have this system is because when you have players in this system, you are able to have players who are very comfortable in possession. Another thing that I want to explain to you here is the angle in which the players receive the ball. And this is going to give us more insight on how the players are supposed to receive the ball. And when Benio Badeshila is here, he can either decide to carry the ball forward since he's not under pressure. And in this position, his main aim is to try and create a 2v1 against the opposition fullback and try to link up with Raheem Sterling and allow. If the fullback commits to try and stop him, then Sterling can actually receive the ball and run in space. Let's look at this uh, clip here again. Now, once Sanchez has received the ball in this kind of situation, look at him. He does not immediately look to pass the ball. He steps onto the ball and walks with the ball towards the pitch. He's walking with the ball. He's not looking to try and just immediately pass the ball, but rather he's receiving the ball and he's looking to how he's able to walk with the ball higher up the pitch. So he decides to carry the ball forward, plays the ball to Benoit Badiashile. Now, when he, if Sanchez was much uh, if Sanchez was much more clever, he should have walked with the ball further, draw, drew in this player to try and press him and play the ball to Badiashile. Because now Badiashile would receive the ball uh, with no pressure and actually look to run with the ball towards Raheem Stali and look to create that overload that I was showing you. But because Sanchez decided to play that ball fast, now Badiashile has, has been able to spot Gusto because now the, the other midfielder was caught into two. He expected that Badiashile will play the ball back to Sanchez. Look at the position of Sanchez. Sanchez is actually occupying the centre-back position. And because Sanchez is occupying that centre-back position, this player actually was caught into two. He thought that Benoit was going to play the ball back to Sanchez and actually force Sanchez to go along. But no, Benoit was able to spot Gusto making that run. And now Gusto plays that ball and looks to drive with the ball. This is what I'm talking about. He drives with the ball forward. And once he drives with the ball forward, the midfielder is left with only two reasons, to try and bring him down. But Gusto is stronger for him. So Gusto manages to actually have the ball, 
play the ball back to Lavia, and now Chelsea have entered the third Madweke. Noni Madweke in this position has already drawn a fullback out of position. So because he has drawn a fullback out of position, he plays the ball back to Gusto. And look now, just quick, simple touches, and Chelsea find themselves from their defensive face of play to their attacking face of play. And in just one simple pass, Chelsea are actually finding themselves in a situation whereby they are actually supposed to score a goal. Luckily, uh, bad news is that Dewsbury Hall was not uh, able to pass the, uh, to score this goal, but Christopher Nkunku also played a very bad pass. In this situation, you're supposed to play a pass that is cross-diagonal. So that is it for what I was trying to explain to you about how Mareske is actually improving Chelsea's build-up phase situation. Now, I'd really like to get more feedback from you about how you think about uh, uh, this situation and I really hope that you're able to get uh, a, a glimpse of why I'm telling you that you should actually look to trust the process and uh, give the manager time. I know a lot of you will be very impatient. You want to win now. You want to compete for titles now. You want to win uh, trophies now. But these kind of systems and patterns of play require patience and time. The good thing about Enzo Maresca is that you are able to see what he's trying to do. You are able to make out that this is his philosophy. This is what he wants to do. This is what he wants to do. And it's very good when you are able to make out what the manager is trying to do. So that is my view. That is my analysis of the build-up phase. Uh, look up. Uh, be ready to actually join and check my progressive phase of play video that I will be doing. If you've not watched this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.